Hello, hello, Evangelist Nick Garrett Channel. Want to answer a few questions about my new book. Uh, always ready to answer, you know, what makes your book different or special? Well, in 230 years worth of books about George Washington that mention his ancestors, um, the authors are very smart and just stay away from it, or they try to, uh, you know, project George Washington's attributes uh, and character traits and narrative on his ancestors from the past, and that doesn't work. In fact, history books from I don't know, like the late 1800s and early 1900s were more concerned with heritage than historical fact, and they kind of even damaged the narrative a little bit. Um, the reality is that many of George Washington's ancestors don't fit inside George's narrative. In some ways, the ancestor's narrative is way more interesting. Um, those links that you do have, direct correlations to George's narrative, are overlooked and missed. Honestly, I see future sites like Pope's Creek, uh, George Washington's birthplace. I see their archaeological efforts there growing. Um, well, anyway, you know, I've made dozens of new discoveries with this book that complete the narrative. And it's also raised a bunch more questions, and that's what I think any good book should do. Um, I want to give you a few examples of some discoveries uh, that you will hear yourself if you listen to uh, chapter one and two from the YouTube channel. So the story of John Washington is how one becomes a colonial planner. It's about the Protestant Reformation. It's about the English Civil War, the settlement of Jamestown, uh, the rise of colonies, the seeds of religious freedom, uh, the birth of uniquely American values, the moral dilemmas that existed between indentured servitude and slavery uh, were starting to show themselves. Women's rights. I mean, there are interesting things that are relevant to today that I found in this story. Um, the rise of African slavery and the hesitancy of the planners, that were particularly in Westmoreland County at this time, there were 266 taxable residents. Um, you know, their hesitancy to use them over the Irish. Um, and there's a lot of historical documentation on that. So the records on John Washington were really fragmented, and they definitely lacked a narrative. So in order to tell the nonfiction story, I had to lay out his life like in a chronology. And I would take the historical records that I did have, and I would put them on that chronology. And I would critically read them, and I'd say, who, what, when, where, why, how. If it named a person, I added that person. If it named a place, I then went and studied the history of that place. And, and by doing so, I was able to fill in the entire timeline of his life. Um, in some ways, I found him uh, in indirect ways. I'll give you examples, right? So in chapter one, we learn about all this witch hunting that took place. Ma Matthew Hopkins, the witch hunter general. Well, the area of Essex that they lived in, uh, during the time that John was a child, uh, and, and during the time that John's mother was living there in Tring, 400 people from their county alone were killed on account of being witches. So imagine if the county you lived in today, 400 people were killed for being witches. So we find our character. Our character knew that this happened. Our character was there during this. What did that do to their character? What did it shape in their character? Um, I'll give you another example, right? So John Washington, um, uh, the shipwreck, you know? So there's a famous shipwreck. We haven't gotten to it yet. It doesn't come till chapter three, but you know, even the plaques at Pokes Creek, they talk about, oh, he got shipwrecked and he ended up staying here. Well, there's more to the story because first the ship just got stuck on a sandbar. It wasn't until a day or more later that the ship sank. And the love story, oh, he did it because he fell in love with Ann Pope, he decided to stay. Well, they didn't get married till two years later. So what's the story? There's gaps there. So let's fill in those gaps. Darn to find it and find a primary source that said the spot where the Seahorse of London ran aground was not known to, to cause problems. Nobody knew there was a sandbar there. What, so why was the ship heavier? You find another primary source where a guy says, hey, the sweet-scented tobacco from Westmoreland County, the way these guys uh, pack them in the hogshead casks, bear heavy, they're heavier, right? And, and the heaviness is unexpected. Well, now we've got something, right? So we find, we find these amazing things that fill it in. Um, the earlier part of the trading mission that's covered in uh, chapter two of the audio, uh, you know, they end up in Poland, right? Why did they start their trip from Poland? Um, Poland had just been decimated by 50 years of war and they're in London and the journey starts in Poland. Why? Well, 
Come to find out, the Dutch signed that Treaty of Westphalia with them and it opened the Baltic Sea to trading. And Poland at that time was the only place in Europe that could sustain growing grain because of the little ice age. So everyone went there to get grain. And, and so now we can speculate with good, uh, robust records why that, uh, why that trip started there. Why did John go overland uh, from one destination to the other and Edward took the ship elsewhere? This makes no sense. They have a ship. They're on a trading voyage. Well, come to find out, Lots of people did that, and they did it to avoid what was called the Orisund. It was a particularly um, taxing uh, duty that nobody wanted to pay. So what they would do is they, you know, the boat would go out of the ways of the customs officials, and the other trader would go overland, do their business, and they'd rendezvous elsewhere to avoid this uh, this tax thing. You know, so it's amazing. Um, you know, uh, th there are so many other things, and this doesn't even get us to the actual site. You know, the Pope's Creek, George Washington's birthplace site, where uh, I've made like just dozens of discoveries and connections. The history of St. Mary's City in Southern Maryland is John Washington's history. The history of the foundation of Jamestown is John Washington's history. The history of Westmoreland County. All these families uh, interacted, intertwined, all the revolutionary era families, you know, so this book tells an amazing story in an amazing way with the most accurate, there's not a sentence in that book that you couldn't turn to me and say, well, how do you know this? My bibliography is half the length of my book. Um, and I did that for two reasons. One, I'm hoping that, uh, George Washington's birthplace or Ferry Farm or Mount Vernon or one of these places uh, that's bigger than me because I'm just a nobody is going to want to pick up some of this material and their professionals can then look at this bibliography uh, and, and and ask different questions and find new discoveries themselves, you know. Um, so people who read this book will not only learn about the Washington family and their roots, but they will get a complete picture of what life was like in the colonial world in Tidewater, Virginia. Um, and I think this book will revolutionize a lot about George Washington's history, about, you know, in a lot of ways, it changed my view of George Washington because George is the first uh, Washington family, uh, first of the Washington family line who doesn't constantly go back and forth by sea between England and America. He doesn't need to, right? When he's born, the family's established. There are multiple properties involved. Um, the, you know, the, the least substantial uh, character maybe was George's father. Uh, George's father, the, the least is known about him and his mother. I think in his mother's case, there's only like six letters that exist, and some of those are from that dodgy era where heritage was more important than history. Um, you know, but Augustine was just a farmer, a, kind of a simple farmer. He uh, ran a mill. He owned a mill, you know, so he, he was in business and he had the Washington family land, but he wasn't doing these big things like John was or like John's son Lawrence was. Um, I found records in New England uh, that talked about some obscure legal maneuver of the time that Lawrence Washington, John Washington's, George's great uh, grandfather and grandfather, uh, some legal maneuver that he had developed that they were using at the time. Um, you know, also this story is about uh, the, the settlement by Mayflower in, in New England. Uh, we have New England ties. Several, uh, the, the captain of the Mayflower himself ends up settling in Westmoreland County. And, uh, you know, he's part of the story. Um, you know, you, you got the town conspiracy theorist in Richard Cole. I found documents where he's accusing John Washington of, um, you know, basically being part of the equivalent of what would be like the Illuminati of the time, uh, the Knight of Malta, you know, and this guy goes in court and he's the town drunk and he goes crazy on him and he accuses William Freak of killing a servant. I mean, you got everything in this story that we have today because these were real people and it's um, fascinating. So anyway, I hope you, I know the chapters are long, but you got to listen to one and two to kind of get the foundation. Chapter three, which you're not even going to hear unless you support me on Patreon um, or buy the book July 4th. Uh, chapter three is where we really get into the colonial um, er, you know, area and we, we learn about this region here. So 
Anyway, also working on stuff for Just Tell Me the Truth About Christianity. I'm going to put out a few videos in the next few days on Reformation versus Counter-Reformation in 2018. And I think you're going to be surprised by those. Um, look forward to uh, talking to you guys. Uh, as always, I appreciate the privilege of being able to make these videos uh, and share the things that I learn with you. Uh, I take it very seriously. I try to work really hard. And I am so grateful to have you as subscribers. Um, uh, you know, I know there's about 200 of you that kind of regularly watch everything and the other ones of you I know sometimes see me in the feed and maybe don't watch. If I could get your help with anything right now, there is a list of videos uh, that I will put in the description that have been demonetized or, or censored for really no reason. All they're doing is teaching objective truth. Um, but I need two things from you. Watch them, watch them, watch them, watch them over again. I need them to be over a thousand views in a week so that they'll review them. I'm sure the algorithm is the only problem and that it caught it and it demonetized it. I make 50 cents a video and if I have enough videos, maybe I can make uh, pay my electric bill with it, you know? So it's like not a fortune. I'm not asking you to fund a Ferrari for me. Um, the second thing, uh, share my stuff on other platforms. Would you, do, do you like some of my stuff enough that you would go on Facebook and say, hey, I don't, I don't agree with everything this guy says. He's goofy, he's loud, he talks fast, but man, he's got some good stuff. Or I hate all this guy's stuff except this one thing, but watch this one thing. Would you be willing to go on another platform and link people over to us? Secondly, uh, we are approaching 10,000 subscribers, and that's because of you guys, and I'm so excited, and we'll do something special for that. I uh, look forward to talking to you all soon. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye.